Yes, what we should do as we start this series this morning, please, I want to lead us in a time of prayer, very special time of prayer for the world, for what is going on in the world. What are we supposed to pray about? We're going to pray against injustice. At the root of all the crises that the world has been seeing from ages up to now is injustice. Injustice, the treatment of mankind, mistreatment of mankind by other mankind, domination, imperialism, we call them all by their names because if we can, you want to solve a problem, you got to call, call the diagnosis correctly. The diagnosis must be correct for the solution to come. Hallelujah. So we want to pray against injustices, imperialism, domination, colonization, recolonization, neocolonization, everything that human beings have been doing to dominate others. It doesn't matter who is doing it. It is wrong, and it will remain wrong. Whoever does it to another is wrong. Today, Russia is doing it to some other country, to Ukraine in particular. It is wrong, as it was wrong yesterday, for everything that else was done that I'm not naming this morning. Hallelujah. So you want to agree with me in prayer? Just stand up for a moment. We want to just pray for injustice. Then we'll pray for the people who are suffering as a result of the injustice. Let's pray. Lift up your voices to the Lord. Oh, salabrena, makasta labrena. Non telebrosa labradigas me edirado. Makala rendos me shaladigra madesha la uta. Nu patala madesha londradiga sabande. Ni candolo bo celebre da la mahante. Ni zakolo broski. Ina hanta la mama maden. Ni so. Maluho sapta nabra diga handa la maden. No som radiga shalanda. Mokolo breja la mahaski la brahantes. Matolo breden shulo honda la magen. Morida bashala radiga hante le zodia. Radonska la madesha la radiga salon. Makana malej no nigra mahantes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We stand against injustices. We stand against mankind domination of other mankind, nations dominating other nations, injustice, ripping of resources of other countries, subjugating other human beings, making them substandard citizens. We stand against it in all its forms by whoever does that in any part of the world. And we pray fundamentally that human beings will be healed of that act in their heart, that wickedness, wickedness in the hearts of men. To think of subjugating other human beings created in the image of God. Subjugating them to their domination, to their culture, to their democracy, to whatever they think. It is wrong and God is against it and it shall not stand. We stand against that and we pray that they will be healed. They will be healed of all of that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, there will be healing. Yes, the nations and the leaders of the world, the most powerful nations of the world, that they will be healed and their political structures. They will be healed in their hearts from this wickedness. Wickedness of dominating other people. Wickedness of exploiting their resources for their own good. Wickedness of making other people second, sla second class citizens and human beings. We stand against it. May their eyes be opened and may they know that it is wrong, it is unacceptable before God and they must stop. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And when injustice is resolved, peace will come to the world. The world will know a new order of peace where nations will respect one another and people will live at peace with one another, with their neighbors. When they start looking at one another as a creation of God, equal in status, not to be dominated, exploited, in the name of Jesus. And now, for those who are suffering from the result of injustices and all these things that we have named, let's lift them up, that God will provide for comfort for them, especially that none will die without receiving Jesus. Let's pray for them, especially for the people of Ukraine. Not only for the Christians of Ukraine, for everybody in that situation. Let's pray for them.
Sitan de Lelej, Lograbis Colomon de Sebradija, Lima Sata Labrahasto, Glemland Amalo Saint Jolodi, Broca Labradigos, Broca Labradigos, Calizando Sechela Made, Sechela Mades, Bocalabranda, Ilisto Celebrando, O Colobri de la Masanda. Oh Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for, for your protection over all the citizens of Ukraine, whether they are believers or not, it doesn't matter. We pray for their protection. We pray that you protect them and preserve them from the violent outsource of war. Lord, you protect them in their hiding places and you help those who need to escape, to escape from that terror. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all refugees in all other countries and countries that are at war, we remember Cameroon, the suffering people of the Anglophone regions of Cameroon, who have been pushed from their nation for five years going, and the world has chosen to look the other way because they are subhuman human beings, or they don't matter, their lives don't matter. And we pray for those people also in nations like Nigeria and all in Mali and all those countries who are also victims of terrorism, victims of barbarism. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that you continue to protect them, provide for them, for the eternally displaced, those who are running and homeless and out without shelter and without food. We leave them up to your throne of grace this morning, Lord. We ask for your protection. We ask that you send benevolent people and organizations to go meet those needs, Lord. To go cater for those ones, Lord. Oh, and those who have been unjustly imprisoned. Unjustly imprisoned in countries because of their political opinion. Or because of their right to self-determination. Lord, they will meet them and comfort them in their jails or in their incarceration centers. Lord, you continue to strengthen them. Comfort them. Because a life that is not lived for a purpose is a life that is wasted. To let them know that for what they are fighting for, if they are fighting for justice, they are fighting for their right to be human beings, they are fighting the right cause. And even in their suffering, in their agony, Lord, you comfort them that that is the best life to live than to walk out, say you are free, but you are in chains. It's better to be in chains for your freedom than to walk free without chains. May you comfort them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And we receive everything that we are praying. Because you are God who honors our prayers. We give you all the glory, the praise and adoration forever and ever. Amen. Give a clap offering to the Lord and take your seat. Wonderful. Text him, do I still need this hand microphone? I don't need it. Okay. He was really taking my life with this offering. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Wonderful. I'll try to be, I'm not used to holding things in my hand. I like to have my hands free, but <clears throat> I'm constrained by the times. Beloved, are you happy you came to church today? Yeah. Are you happy that you should be praying prayers like the ones who pray? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, that's what we did on Friday. Our all church prayer night. We pray for the nations. And by the way, we don't just pray for believers. Or Christians who pray for everyone. Everyone needs prayers. The God we love, the God that we serve loves everybody. Sinners and righteous people. He makes the sun to shine on everyone, the wicked and the good. That's the kind of God we serve. Hallelujah. And we should be imitators of our God. That we should look kindly on those who are unrighteous. We should love the sinners but not their sin. Yes. And I come to encourage you this morning. You may be having sex with someone you're not married, but keep coming to church. You are welcome to our church. Yeah, some people are very angry at that. Why would you want people who are doing outrageous things to come to church? Let them come. Come. Keep coming. If you are doing anything wrong or you are defrauding anybody, keep coming. Keep coming to church. If you are stuck in addiction, you're taking drugs and you're not getting your way out, keep coming to church. What else can people do? Tell me what else they can do. Whatever you're doing, I don't care how bad it is. Keep coming to church. You are welcome to this church. Because the church is the place for broken people. The church is the place for people who need help. 
The church is a place where Jesus transforms lives. So keep coming. Tell somebody you are welcome to church this morning. Hallelujah. You are welcome to church this morning. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. You are welcome to church this morning. You are welcome to church this morning. And the Lord God of heaven is telling you welcome. Because he has a solution for you. Hallelujah. Yes, you're not going to live the same way you came. Hallelujah. You are in the process of being touched and transformed and healed and helped. How many people need help this morning? Yes, if you need help, you are in the right place this morning. And those of you on Zoom, you are in the right place. Those of you watching on social media, you are in the right place. Keep coming to church. Let nothing stop you from coming to church. Let nothing stop you from coming to God. Not your sin, not your unbelief. Whatever it is, come to God. Because the church is a healing center where Jesus, a master healer, will heal every manner of diseases. The Bible says Jesus came to heal all manner of diseases. He came to destroy all the works of darkness. So if you come to church, you have come for help. Hallelujah. Tell somebody you have come for, to help, for help. You have come for help. Yes. This is not a religious ceremony. This is not a religious occasion. This is not a social gathering where we come on Sunday morning to see what our, we bought, what our latest dress look like. No, we came here because we need help. I don't know about you. I need help. I and my wife are, are having some challenges, not between us, but together we are fighting some challenges. We need help from God. We need help. This morning, one of my sons said, his head is almost exploding. He's having a very terrible headache. I told him, come inside the sanctuary. Don't, don't, don't go high, far away. Come inside the sanctuary because help is in this place this morning. There is help in this place. If you came here with some sickness, with some situation that you've been dealing with for a longest time, you have come to the place of help. Tell somebody, I have come for the place of help. I have come to the place of help. And we have surely come to someone who cannot fall, can, which cannot fail you. Jesus can never fail you. Jesus will never fail you, my friends. Since the day I came to faith in Christ Jesus, he has never, never failed me on any one occasion. And if you don't trust my words, trust David's word. He said, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, there are children begging for bread. Trust David's word. Hallelujah. So are you the righteous this morning? You are the righteous, not because of the things you do. You are the righteous because of what he did. He has called you righteous. And David says, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. That's a whole sermon on this one. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a whole sermon. Hallelujah. How many of you know that when I stand here, the Lord gives me the oracle, the ability to speak his mind to you. And I don't know who I'm speaking to. I don't even know what I'm talking about. That's why I still have to go and listen to this message after to hear what the Lord said. Because I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know who I'm talking to. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are in the right place. So I was thinking about my message for you today. The message, I titled it, up until this morning, then I got the title for the message. Glorious things are spoken of you. Glorious things are spoken of you, World Missions Christian Fellowship. Tell somebody, glorious things are spoken of you. Tell somebody. Yes, glorious things are spoken of you, World Missions Christian Fellowship. That's the title of the message the Lord wants me to bring to you this morning. So you, are you interested in finding out the glorious things that God has spoken of you this morning? Are you interested? How many people are interested in the content of this message? Let me just see. Yes, I know that not everyone wants to hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. But all of you are in the right place. And you cannot not hear. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, so you are here. Welcome once more to the friends on Zoom. Welcome once more to our social media partners. Those on Facebook, YouTube, and all other channels, and those who will be watching the real broadcasting or recording. So I was thinking about this topic of conversation this morning, actually, and the image that came to my mind to share with you that will drive home this message thoroughly. 
is the image of slavery. And in choosing this particular illustration, I realized that it might open some wounds to some people. So I want to ask you, if, if, if this reminds you of something, please forgive me. I wasn't intentional to hurt. But I'm using the illustration of slavery because it accurately describes what I wanted to, the Lord wants you to hear this morning about the glorious things he has spoken of you. So imagine hypothetically that your great, 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 great grandfather, the one that, okay, was from the beginning, that's when your ancestry came, right? Your family line, right? Your family tree, right? Let's say your great, great grandfather was a debtor. He owed money to someone, some person who was more powerful than them. And because they could not pay, they were taken as slaves. As a slave. Actually, this is consistent with history. That in ancient times, if you owed debt and you could not pay, the, 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 the person you owed, your creditor could actually take you as a slave. All right? So, it, lo it looks like a good illustration. So, let's say your great-great-grandfather owed some debt that were unable to pay and they were taken as a slave. Let's just put some figures so that it's easy. How many of you like storytelling? This story will really work well. Let's say your great-great-grandfather owed a million, a million dollars, and they couldn't pay, and so they were taken as slaves for the one million dollars they couldn't pay. And the terms of the slavery was that if, he, if your great-grandfather had any children, these children would also be slaves because he is a slave. He, the children will also become slaves. In other words, the, the one million dollars, if your great-grandfather had a, one child, that child will also owe one million dollars to the person that took them as slave. <laughs> took, took them. So the debt was just going to count on every child, every descendant of your grandfather. So fast track, fast track is you now in the picture, right? Let's fast track. You are the one in the picture. You and your two sisters, siblings. You and your two siblings. It's better that way, right? You and your two siblings. Now each one of you owe a million dollars because of your great-great-grandfather. And because of that, all of you are slaves to the, to the person whom your great-grandfather owed some debt. Uh, does this story is coming? I hope the story is clear so far, right? You need to understand it very clearly. So you are now a debtor and a slave, not because of anything you did, but because of being born in your grandfather's lineage. So the only crime you have committed to be a slave today to owe one million today is that you were born to somebody who owed a debt. That's very unfair to this generation now. They'll quickly respond to me, that is unfair. Okay? <laughs> yeah, but that is, it is the way it is. Okay? It is unfair, but it is the way it is. It is what it is. So, you are the one in the picture there, illustration there. You are owing one million, and you are a slave because of the one million, because your great-great-grandfather was a debtor, and, that, and was a slave, and that's why you are a slave, and that's why you owe one million. Let's compound the story a little bit. It means that if you plan to have any kids, guess what is going to happen to your kids also? They are also going to be debtors of one million each, and they are also going to be slaves like you are slaves. Boy, the thing is going, it's horrifying. And, and maybe if you told this generation this story, they would rather just have their pets and not have human beings, right? Because in this illustration, the pets are not part of the dead or the body. Okay? And maybe, is that why many people are preferring pets to having children? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. This generation now, they have their own descendants. Their descendants are their dogs and their cats and their, <laughs> you know. And some even have wild animals that I will not go closer to. <laughs> their descendants. Attorneys have a lot of work. I hope attorneys in this house, you have a lot of work talking, deciding the estates of those people. Are their cats going to own them? I don't know, you know. But let me stay on my lane, okay? Let me stay on my lane. <laughs> Interesting. 
Okay, so you see where I'm going with this story? It's very frightful for me to want to bring kids under this kind of lineage, lineage because I'm unjustly, I'm also subjecting them to what I have already called unjust. Something that is unjust that has happened to me. I'm a debtor, I'm a slave, not because of anything I did, and I'm trying to bring other people into the world to fall into the same situation. Question. Here is my question to you. If you've understood my analogy up to this time, question for you. Quick question to you. Quick question so that I'm getting you to think. Question to you. What you how can you get out of this situation? What's your... Uh, hey, I didn't tell you another piece. If you want to stop your generation from your, your children and your descendants from belonging in this debt trap and slave trap, you got to pay the one million not only for yourself but for all of them. Pay the one million for each person, <laughs> each of your descendants, and you get them off the trap. You get them off the debt. You get them off the slavery thing. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Let me quantify it. So if I have three kids like I, I do, is it three? Let me think again. How many, how many are they? <laughs> okay, I adopted one also. So there are four, right? Yeah, four. I have four kids. So not only would I have to pay four million for each one of them, that's four million to, so that they are free, but if they also have to have kids, I'll have to pay they, for their kids also, and their kids' kids. Or otherwise, I've always set them free, but their children are not free. Are you, are you with me? <laughs> are you here with me? So, how many grandchildren would I possibly have if I have to set all of them free from this track? How many? How much, how much would I need to pay to cough off, to, to set them free? Can you think? Okay, let's say my grandchildren, all my descendants, until the time Jesus comes, they are going to be 100. How do I even know that? Do I have control over that number? Okay, let's just even agree that it's 100. 100 times 1 million is how much? Do I have that amount of money? What? <laughs> this is why I'm going with this. With you. You follow with me, follow with me. Not only can I actually do the math correctly and know if I have to set all my generation free from this debt, I don't even know how many of them are. I don't even know how they will look like. So that's the number one. And even if I knew for sure that there will be 100 of them, all my descendants, all my great, 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 great grandchildren till Jesus comes, even if I knew there were 100, do I have 1 billion to pay to set them free? I don't, even if I sell this church and confiscate all your assets. I will not be able to do it. So what's the bottom line? Bottom line, bottom line of the story is that here yeah, am I in a situation that I inherited because of my lineage to my great-grandfather, a situation that has put me in debt, a situation that has made me a slave, a situation that I cannot get out of. I can at least help myself if I find a million. If I break a bank, <laughs> you know, if I do some fishy stuff, crypto or whatever kind of business, I can probably set myself free, but my generation, it cannot be free. So I have a debt that I cannot fully pay for. I'm beginning to tell somebody something now. Somebody is beginning to hear my message this morning. So we are all, each one of us, each one of us was a descendant of Adam, the first man who owed a debt to God. And because of that, he was handed to become a slave to the devil. He was handed over to be the slave of the devil who has become the god of this world. Adam was made to become the little god of the world. But he lost, he lost his authority and his power and he lost his position to devil. And the devil took over and made him a slave a debtor to sin, and which he has transferred to all his generations. Everyone that comes into this world, born of the natural flesh process of, of, of procreation, was born into Adam, was born into, say, into, into sin, was born into slavery to sin, and we are under that, and we are heading 
for destruction. And none of us could alter our path. None of us can pay that slave debt. None of us can pay the, the, the price for our sins. None of us, the Bible says, no one can do that. No one can conveniently pay the price for their sins and set themselves free. That is gospel. The gospel, that's the word of God, and it is true. I know there are people out there trying to defeat that and saying all their good works, all the things that they do, that if this doesn't get me to heaven, I don't know what else will. I heard some people say that arrogantly, arrogantly. In a conference that I attended as a scholar, I attended a con conference, and I met some bright economists, people who are very smart. They wrote very smart papers, and, 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 and they were delivering the inaugural speech at the conference. They did so well, and, and, and during the coffee break, I, I came close to greet them, to greet these economists, this superman, and said, wow, I wish I would be like you. And he was just commenting to the people around him, standing around him. He said, you know what? Stuff like this, if they don't get me to heaven, I don't know what else will. I listened and I looked and said, I'm sorry. Oh, I just said in my heart, I wish I knew. He knew that this would not get him. This is nothing. All of these acts of whatever, I, I don't care whatever you invented, is great. But that is not enough. It cannot buy your way out. It cannot resolve the problem of sin. It cannot resolve the problem of our, sin, of our condemnation to sin. It's only one thing. And that's what I want to show you this morning. It's only one thing. So look at that cross. Okay. No, yeah, 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 yeah. The question, I still have a question for you. What's the way out? What do you think could be a solution, a sustainable solution, not only for you, but for all your descendants to this problem? Think about the solution. I want you to think. How can you get yourself out of this debt trap, this sin trap, this slave trap? For yourself and for your children. Oh, that's a church answer, right? A church answer. But I'm, I'm appealing right now to your intellect, actually. I want, you, I want you to think in your mind. Don't give me a church answer. You go back to the base? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your master, you and your kindred, you and your descendants will obey your master because he is the one to release you. Without him, you can't go nowhere. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. People have, are, are, this is the first time we have church where people are giving their contribution. Praise mighty Jesus. As if that would be my case, I would revolt and we would kill the master and get our freedom. Okay. Last one. Yes, I will advise my descendants to stop having sin. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know what I was thinking about is those are great answers. But let's just go to common sense, right? I told you common sense, right? Common sense. God gave you common sense so that you can use it. So if the reason why you are in this situation is because of your great-grandfather, what he did, right? What he did is basically what put you into this. How about getting a new grandfather? Is it possible to get a, a new great-great-grandfather? Oh, you think it's not possible? Oh, oh, these people are funny. If your great-great-grandfather was the cause of the problem, and it were possible to change your great-great-great-great-grandfather, the, the first great-grandfather who caused the problem, if it were possible, wouldn't that be the best answer? Wouldn't that be the best answer? Oh, oh you think it's not possible? Oh, okay. This is what the word of God is telling you now. Listen to me. And I'm glad you people did not see that. It is possible to have a new great beginning grandfather. It is very, very possible. The Bible actually shows us that 
Jesus became the second and the last Adam. So the first Adam got us in trouble. The solution to that problem that the first Adam created is the second Adam. God said another Adam. And, what, and the answers you have been given are very consistent. But just that it was not rooted in the foundations. God now has another grandfather reset. They say reset. The solution of the problem is to reset. Reset and take a new great grandfather and begin it all again. Hallelujah. That is the solution to this problem. Reset and start again. Reset and start again. So God sent a new great, great grandfather. The first Adam was not our, our lineage as believers in Jesus Christ. It's not to the first Adam. If not, we are still in that situation. We have now have a new great, a first, we have got a first beginning. We have re- got, oh my, I don't know what I, need, what, what I need to say. You need to be born again. You need to be born again. When we say we are born again, it means we start afresh. That's why he says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new species. Oh, every old thing has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. A reset. A reset. I tell you, we read the Bible, I tell you, we read the Bible, and you all know this from your infancy. You knew the scripture from your infancy. But knowing is one thing. Understanding and having a revelation is another. Reset. We've got to reset. Yes, yeah, sit on that table. We need to reset. That is the solution to this problem. We've got to reset. We've got to begin all over. It is impossible. All the solutions you people are giving are cosmetic solutions. I've told you people, how much are you going to pay? I can manage and free myself, but my descendants are still trapped. Okay, you say that, what if I start all over? Does it mean all my children that are born automatically say, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. They will also need to make their own decision, but now the decision is simple. The decision is not about paying the debt. The decision is about believing. Oh, it is easy now to actually solve that problem without putting money. Mm. Hallelujah! Oh, glory be to God! Glory be to God! This is the good news. And if you get this kind of good news, you cannot not share it. You cannot not be passionate about sharing it. If you fully knew this, I tell you, you will not be passive at your workplace. You will not see someone who is with you day in, day out. You are going for coffee, for lunch, and you know that they have not received this, and you keep it quiet to yourself. You cannot. You cannot. The reason why we are not talking it is probably we have not understood it. We have not even received it. But we are in church. If you know this, you cannot not tell someone. And some of these people are actually members of your family. Closer to you. You know the consequences. Do you really know the consequences of not doing what God has said to reset yourself to someone? Do you know what to, how will happen to someone who refuses to reset? Do, or you, do you be, uh, we have some unbelieving believers. Unbelieving believers. Do you really know that if there's eternity in hellfire? Do you know that if somebody dies without resetting, resetting is eternity in a burning fire forever? Is that what you want for your family member? Is that what you want for your neighbor? Is that what you want for your relative? For your colleague that you love, that you're going, that you're buying coffee for and lunch for? Is that what you want for them? What does it take? I'm not asking you to become pastors. I'm not asking you to become missionaries. But you could invite them to come hear the message. Could you intentionally take someone for lunch tomorrow just because you want to give them an invitation to come to church? And it's easy nowadays. They have the option of being on Zoom. How could you hear this and not take action? How could you hear this and keep it to yourself? I've come.
come to beg you, the church of God. Do you really understand this? How can this be so true and so powerful? And yet you have not told it to anybody. And you are not doing anything about it. This gospel was committed to us. You and I. You and I. My job is to motivate you to do it. It's not me that I'm going to reach all your, your circle of friends. It's not me who has to reach all your family circles. You, oh, it's your responsibility. If you have received this message, it is your responsibility to share it to someone. Again, I'm not asking you to become a pastor. But you can surely invite somebody to a church that preaches this gospel. A church that is not afraid of preaching this gospel. A church that is not afraid, is not intimidated to challenge people. Yes, you can surely invite people to come to that church. And what does it take to invite someone? We've even gone as far as done a card for you. Be my guest. With all the information they need. But it will take someone to take it from here and put it in somebody's hands. We also have it electronically, digitally. And you're busy sharing stuff on Instagram, on all the social media pages. How many of these have you shared to somebody? This is not important. I guess it's not important. Or you, you think if you share it, I'll get, a, I'll, I'll get a cut back from it. Or you think if you share it, you'll make me famous. My name is here. Or if you think if more people listen to me, I'll become famous. Well, if I become, what about that? Glorious things are spoken of you. Hallelujah. Glorious things are spoken of you. I've come to encourage you. The word of God comes in power also to convict us. To motivate us. Hallelujah. I know that you're going to change. I know that from this service today, you not go back and do the same thing. You're going to do different, something different. Hallelujah. So let's see what Jesus did. You all pointed to Jesus, which I said was a church answer. But actually, it is the right answer because God reset. But in resetting, yes, what he did, actually. Oh, I don't know whether I have much time to preach this one. But that was the core of my message. It seems like I've already preached. The core of my message, I've not even got there. Yes, what God did. Because we were sinners and slaves to sin. Caught in bondage, in the bondage of sin and condemnation forever. Yes, what he did. For our sake. No, let me talk about me. Because I, I, don't, I don't know whether I can talk about you. Let me talk about me. For my sake, he made him to be seen. Him there is who? Him there is who? The person who solved my problem. Jesus Christ was made to be seen. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, oh. Who knew no sin? So that in him, I might be made the righteousness of God. Now when we read this scripture, we'll go very fast. And you don't see the things that are there. Now, for those who are arguing about the, who undermine the power of God or the power of the cross and how, because they want to see themselves in the picture how they are fasting and praying three hours every day and giving so much and serving and going on mission field and doing ministry for 100 years to boast of their righteousness in God I have, I'm sorry for you I'm sorry for you I'm sorry for you because there is something you miss there is something that you miss in that picture. That your sin problem cannot be resolved by your actions. It cannot be resolved by your personal actions. It cannot be resolved by all the good works and the good will that you have. Do you know that Jesus was not just made to pay for the price of our sin? Let me repeat. Do you know that Jesus was not only made to pay for the price of our sin. He actually was made sin. Jesus was made a sinner. Oh. 
God made him to be seen, even though he had no sin in him. So yes, what he, yes, I don't know. Le son maradigos calabras con is lo mas alegro ni soco la bravida na mantes sechi la bravosca y la bronando. I'm saying this in the spirit because I'm not able to explain it. But the Holy Spirit, can you explain it to them so that they can understand? I don't know. I don't have words to explain this thing to them. That God made Jesus to be seen. Listen, listen. This means that. That adultery that you committed or fornication, God changed the picture and saw Jesus committing adultery in your place. Oh, that that murder, that act, you killed somebody. God changed the picture and put Jesus to be the one who committed the act. Jesus became a sinner. So all the sins that I committed were now put to Jesus' account as a sinner. On that cross, Jesus actually became the one who committed all my sins. I don't know whether you got that. I don't know whether you hear this. Now, if Jesus is the one who now accurately has committed all the sins, it. What has become of me? What has become of me? I'm now a saint. I, God looks at me now, my own picture. I am like Jesus was before. Oh, ma, ya la gose me. Lendra smoke in the old Samaritans. How, why they not explain me this? Because they don't understand. Because they don't understand it. They have not understood it. So when they are telling you that on the cross he was made sin, in other words, Jesus replayed, God replayed your life. All the actions that you have committed, you are currently committing and will commit in the future, were replayed with Jesus committing all of those. So that when God looks at you, he doesn't see anything that you have done. He doesn't see anything. Why? Because he has made someone to take full responsibility for all your actions so that he can set you free. This is the powerful truth of the gospel that if people realize what Jesus did and what God has done and his plan is so that you can walk without guilt or condemnation. I now see why Paul would tell us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Oh, new because what? Because all their acts have been given to Jesus as a sinner so that I can start again afresh and not able to do any of those things. I cannot even do any of those things again because Jesus took my whole nature with him. Do you know that for him to actually become sin, he had to take the sinful nature. He had to take my sinful nature with him. He had to take my sinful nature with him. And therefore, what nature do I now have? What nature now do I have? I have the divine nature. Oh, boy. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I now have a different nature. On that cross, Jesus became a curse. Jesus was cursed because of my sin. He was cursed because you and I are our sin. So, how can God curse Jesus for your sin and still curse you? Accountants, isn't that double counting? It, wouldn't that be double counting? How can they pay the same debt twice? So Jesus paid so that you'll never be cursed. He was cursed so that we can never be cursed anymore. Hallelujah. What are we now? We are now partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share in his divine nature and escape the world's corruption that is caused by human desires. 
I've come to announce to the church. Who are you now in Christ? I told you glorious things are spoken of you. Let me tell you the things that are spoken of you now in heaven. Now that you have accepted Jesus Christ, and I know everyone has not yet done it. Everyone has not yet reset. But I'm going to come to the resetting. Let me first tell you what, what has happened. The glorious things that have been spoken of those who have already reset. Let me tell you what they are. If you are in Christ now, you have been accepted. You are God's child. You are Christ's friend. You have been justified. You have been united with the Lord and you are one with him in spirit. You have been bought with a price and you belong to God. You are a member of Christ's body, his church. You are a saint. You have been adopted as God's child. You have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit that has come to live in you. You have been redeemed and forgiven of all your sins. You are complete. You are secure. You are free forever from condemnation. You are assured that all things are working together day by day for your good. You are free from any condemnation charges against you. Your accuser will be telling you about the things that you have done. But none of those things is on your charge anymore. Hallelujah. Here are the things. Glorious things are spoken of you. Glorious things are spoken of you. You cannot be separated from the love of God. You cannot be separated from the love of God. He has established and anointed and sealed you with the Holy Spirit. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. You are confident that God who has begun this good week work in you. He is confident. He's sure to carry it to completion till the day Jesus comes. You are now a citizen of heaven. Rejoice in your citizen in heaven. Above your citizenship on earth. Yes, you have been given this. You have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power. Yet, yeah, there's wars going all around the world, but you, God has not given the spirit to fear. He has given the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Yes, you can find grace and mercy in your time of need. Yes, you are born of God and the evil one cannot touch you. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than they that are in the world. Yes, yes, what also? Glorious things have been spoken of you. You are significant. You are the sword and the light of the earth. You are the branch of the true vine, a channel of Christ's life. You have been chosen and appointed to bear much fruit. Yes, you are a personal witness of Christ and his ambassador here on earth. God's temple is in you. You are seated with Christ in heavenly realms. Oh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. If you agree with this, stand up to your feet and worship the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, Sakala Baba. Yes, worship. Worship.
Beloved, take your seats in the presence of the Lord. And in agreement with what I just told you, let me assure you that some of you have been healed of diseases in your body. When this kind of word comes out, oh, Jesus Christ, his word brings power. His word brings power. He brings healing. When Jesus preached the gospel in his days, when he preached the word of God, people were healed. People were healed of all manner of diseases. And it's the same today. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I come to announce to you this morning. If you came in here with any disease in your body, I declare by the authority of Jesus Christ's name, who resurrected from the dead, you are healed of that disease. You are healed in Jesus' name. Be healed of that disease. Be cleansed of that disease. Be cleansed. May your blood pressure reduce. May it stabilize. May your blood be cleansed of any disease in it. May any wound, any, any lump in your body disappear. May it lose its vitality. No disease shall fasten itself against your body. No disease. And now let me talk about obstacles. Today, I call on the name of Jesus Christ as a strong tower on your behalf. If you are pursuing any project, if you are pursuing any project, I call it project because you can name it whatever you want inside. If you are pursuing any project and you have been having obstacles on your way, human, natural, artificial, whatever obstacle it is that has been standing on your way, I cause it to fall in the name of Jesus. I push down those walls in front of you. In the name of Jesus, you walk through those walls now. They are imaginary walls. Go and walk through. Go and walk through. Every door that they told you that is not possible, go back and knock on those doors. I have declared them open. I kick them open for you. In the name of Jesus, no obstacle can stand in front of you. Push them down. They are imaginary. Go there and push them down. You, if they ask who sent you, say, I sent you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Push down those obstacles and walk through. I declare open doors before you. In the name of Jesus. Open doors. Open doors before you. In the name of Jesus. And whosoever shall stand on your path, he shall be crushed into powder. On whom this stone shall descend, he shall be crushed into powder. Go in victory. The victory is yours. The victory is yours. Hallelujah. God has given you the victory. He has given me victory. I will lift him higher. Jehovah, I will lift him higher. He has given me victory. I known this church this way you have not seen anything yet you have not seen anything yet huh? gone are the days when church is just church we come here to receive power to go through this thing you that I see today you are not the same person not the same person that I will see next week not the same person that your neighbors will see tomorrow hallelujah but can I just give an occasion for anyone who has not really received Jesus 
and this power and this victory that we are celebrating this morning. If you have not yet received it, oh, can we help you to reset? What a, what a, what a catastrophe to let you go without resetting. You need to reset this money. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to make you freak out this money. And maybe you are even watching us on social media. There's no way I can actually do that, right? And there's no way I can do that. But here's what you can do. If you need to reset this money. Or you need to recommit yourself to resetting. Yes, so you can either reset for the first time. Or you can recommit yourself to resetting. Hallelujah. Yes, I will do. Simple prayer. Simple prayer. And I'll ask anyone. Let's join them, right? Let's let not only hear their voices, they are timid. Let's join all of them in prayer. Pray after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross. Taking my place and all my sin upon himself. I realized that I could not have a relationship with you on the basis of my works or performance. But I thank you that in Christ I'm forgiven and right now. If I've ever, if I've done anything before, I receive you into my life. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. Was raised on the third day. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I now accept myself as a child of God. Because of the free gift you have given to me. I gladly receive it and accept it for all eternity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give a, give a clap offering for those ones? Yes, let's give a clap offering for those ones. And yes, please. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. God is faithful. The commitments to Jesus Christ or recommitment to Jesus Christ. This card you see is behind the chair where you're sitting. It's there with a pen for you. This card. I think I actually have it on the screen there. Yeah, they have removed it already in my slides. Okay, that's fine. But this card is there, please. What I want you to do is, it's just a simple take. If you made this decision for the first time, you tick the first box. If you are recommitting your life, rededicating, resetting for the second time or for the second and last time, because you don't have to reset every week, every Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are resetting for the first time, put your, tick that box and put your name and contact number because I want to be on my knees for you. That God will perfect the thing that he has started for you today, until the day of Christ. I want you to fill this form and also bring it with your offering. We are transitioning to our tithes and offering. We give voluntarily as God has empowered us. According to his word, we give our tithes and we give our offerings to the Lord with joy, not out of compulsion. We do it gladly. That's what we're going to do. You can give online. Even if you are inside this room, you can still give online. Or if you want to do it in the offering basket, fine. But bring this card with you also along your offering. Can we do that? Can we do that this morning? Can we do that this morning? Yes. I'm welcoming the worship team to lead us into our offerings this morning. Hallelujah.